Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Tech, and welcome back to our channel. And today we're going to be checking out the Kados Edge 2, which is one of the fastest SBCs we ever had on this channel. So let's get started. Now, I do want to thank Adas for sending this over to me for review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. And as of now, until October 31st, there will be an um, early bird special. So there will be a discount on this device. I'll leave, again, the links all down in the description below. Now, I got to say, I've been using this for about four to five days as a desktop Ubuntu 22.04, and it's very, very impressive. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought this is a mini PC, maybe like eighth generation i5. That's how responsive and fast this CPU is on the Kados Edge 2. Now, at first glance, this is similar size to the Vim 4 we recently reviewed. Um, almost exactly the same size, but they did change uh, quite a few things on here compared to the two. I really wish that Vim 4 was using the same CPU as the Edge 2, but the Edge 2 does have a slight performance increase, and I'll show you the benchmarks in a bit. Now, to take a look at the connections, we first have the USB and the USB-C, which also pertains to power delivery. Uh, we have the full-size HDMI, another USB-C, then a USB. Now, if you compare this to the Kados Vim 4, you can see they actually replaced the Ethernet with the USB-C. So we don't have any more LAN connections. Now, moving over to the side, we still have the function, reset, and the power button. And then flipping it over to the front, we now don't have the 40-pin GPIO that the Vim 4 has like here this is the 40 pin gpio like the raspberry pi style and this only has those ribbon cables for dsi dsi csi and fsd or fsi uh, for the front one now on the underside there's nothing exciting except for this new seven pin usb uart connector but otherwise they also got rid of the m.2 which is very surprising to me because this would have been really good if i had this on the board this way we could actually use expandable storage because this feels more desktop oriented. Like you can actually use this as a desktop and the extra storage would be a great help. Now, as far as the specs goes, uh, this is running the Rockchip 3588S, which is the smaller version of the 3588. So there is a beefier version or a faster version of the same CPU. So this is using the 3588S um, it has two different models with 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte LP DDR4 or low power DDR4 RAM. Two versions of the storage, which is 32 gigabyte eMMC and 64 gigabyte eMMC. So there's a basic and the pro version. Otherwise, everything is virtually the same. You still get the Bluetooth, you get the Wi Fi 6. You also both get the six top NPU, which is available at launch. So we're going to be also testing that in this video as well. Now, as far as the benchmarks goes, I'll leave a link right on the top, right on the description below, so you can test your own boards as well. But we are using SBC Bench, and I've tested both the boards between the Vim 4, the Edge 2, and a Raspberry Pi. Now, as you can see on the benchmarks, Edge 2 is faster than the Vim 4 and four times faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the RAM itself has a slight increase in speed. The RAM is about 100 megahertz faster than the Vim 4. So yes, you do see mem copy and mem set a little bit faster, but again, it blows the Raspberry Pi away. As far as the seven zip bench, you can see it's almost four times faster than Raspberry Pi 4 and slightly faster than the AM Logic version of the Vim 4. So the CPU itself is very powerful, but not to knock out the Vim 4, the Vim 4 is still very powerful itself. This is just slightly more powerful. And being that you could see that on the benchmarks itself, it is extremely useful as a desktop. All right, guys. So here we have the board. And when you first boot, you will be entering this UWOW uh, firmware. This way you could actually download whatever operating system you need. Um, here you could actually enter to a network and then you could join the Wi-Fi. You could have Ethernet plugged in if you have a USB-C Ethernet. But we're going to continue on to this wizard. But I really hope that a lot more uh, people, because they don't really talk about this firmware much. And I, I hope a lot more boards coming in the near future will support something similar to this type of firmware. Now, Raspberry Pi just incorporated their version with Raspberry Pi Imager on first boot. So it's very, very similar to that. And they've been doing it for quite some time with the Vim 4 board. And you could actually roll back. I believe the Vim 3 also now gets it. But here we have the board when you first go in. You can actually choose a series of images. And you have the Android 12, 
uh, Ubuntu 22, and then the server version. So whatever image you want. And uh, as you can see, this is as new as September 20th. That's when the last time they uploaded or compiled this version. And they have uh, Ubuntu, which is what we're gonna be using today, uh, the Ubuntu GNOME version. If you want, you can refresh the images if they have something new, but otherwise you could choose the version that you want and go through there. Uh, now, I don't want to use anything because I already uh, upgraded this and I already installed the operating system, but I'm just showing you some of the stuff that they have. Now, they do have their own wizard that we were just at. You can actually write an image to EMMC or dump the image, so you don't have to officially use their images. If you want to use Armbian or something that supports this board, you can just load in your own images. Um, you have your network, your system, online scripts, events. What's cool, they actually have something called Get Fun. Uh, where they have little bits of games here and they have like 2408 you kind of just move this around they have tetris they have a bunch of other stuff uh, but it's really cool how they just loaded this up you could tell that they put a lot of time into this so now i'm just going to reboot this right back into the desktop because i already been through this whole step but it's it's a very fantastic board how they of this and I've been using this for the Vim 4 just to test out other operating systems I don't have to worry about loading it back in the day with the Vim 2 uh, you would have to uh, use the USB-C plug it in use their software and then flash the image over or you could use the SD card option but this new board doesn't actually have an SD card so you can't do the SD card version which doesn't matter anymore because we have that utility all right now when you first run Ubuntu the password is Kadas and the username is Kadas. Now I did load in some of my software already, so it's already preloaded with some of the stuff and I kind of like tweaked it to the way I would use it because they had other menus on the bottom and a few other things. But I could show you this is running, let's go to about. Uh, here we go. Eight gigs of RAM, unknown processor. The graphic card is kind of fishy. It, it still uses software render for the desktop itself. So it's still using uh, LLVM. But when I run games or run anything, it does use uh, 3D processing units. So it kind of has a mix match right there. I, I think it's gonna get better in the future, but as of right now, that's where we stand. Uh, I do have the 32 gigabyte version and we are using 22.04 ARM64. GNOME 42.4 and we are using Wayland. So that's that's the system specs on here. As far as the desktop goes, I'm gonna show you guys right now. Like, I'm gonna turn on my web browser and it loads right up. And anytime I wanna like just browse something like I normally would, say like, um, all right, so I'm gonna jump over to my Flame, which is my Dockers and I have this little, you know, welcome screen. But you can see it just loads right up. Uh, let's go to like, say, Snippet Box. Again, super quick very responsive i could load something like this but you're probably thinking like okay let's load something that's actually requires a lot of loading so i'll go to you know what amazon amazon is always a good site but you can see how fast it is there's like i'm not doing anything i'm not speeding up anything it's just a, it's just loading like a normal desktop the images load right away um everything it's just super fast let's go to yahoo there we have it. It's instant, like all this stuff. That's how, I mean, I, I can't explain how responsive this feels because it feels way much faster than a Raspberry Pi. It feels similar to a desktop. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's there, it's there in performance. Now let's check out YouTube and I am gonna see if I could find some sort of like 1080 or a 4K video uh, this way. Oh, there you go. It loads quick, you guys could see it. So I'm gonna load a 4K fireplace and let's get through this and see what happens. All right, this is right now the probably the lowest resolution. So I'm gonna do stats for nerds. Uh, there's 14 drop frames. It is using the four, like the video frame rate is currently at 1080 at 50 frames per second. So 1080 video in this small screen works pretty well. I'm gonna load up full screen and now you're gonna see like a few drop frames constantly. So the, the browser itself is still not using the graphic emulation um, or acceleration, but it's still decent. It's, it's still pretty quick. And you can tell because um, it's just having a ton of drop frames. And if I was to push this over to 4K, you definitely have a ton of drop frames if I full screen this. 
So you could tell that there's like skipping and it pauses sometimes. Let's switch this over to a real 1080, not the 1440p. And over here, we're doing much better. 1080, we're still having some few drop frames, one or two at a time. But yeah, it loads videos just fine. The CPU is ramping up. So if I go over to HTOP, you're gonna actually see some CPU usage because that's it's really pushing the CPU right now just to get this graphic going, which it shouldn't. It should be using the GPU. Now I did use GL Mark II to test some graphic performance just to make sure that the graphics is working. And I'm gonna show you a preview right here. And it is doing its thing. I'm just gonna speed through the whole thing. It, it runs very well and it has no problem running the graphic acceleration part. So I know it's working to an extent. Now I did run into some issues with certain games not being able to work because it can't create a window in Wayland. And in Wayland, it's the only option that you can use to actually get the graphic acceleration. So it's a whole mix match of things kind of trying to figure it out on how, what works and what doesn't. Now I'm gonna jump into a Linux only game, which is Super Tux Cart, full screen, 1080. Everything works pretty well. Audio does work. I'm gonna go into single player and show you guys the performance. I'm just gonna go with Tux. Novice, obviously. I'm not that good in this game at all. Um, let's do Daylight. Mm, it starts. As you can see, I don't even have a high score in this. But here we go. We got our Tux cart. Here we go. Oh, he's not even moving at all. I pick up some Nitro packs. Let's go over here. Oh, that's a bowling ball. And the performance is outstanding on this. Look at this, this is all 3D. It's running perfectly fine. It's running really smooth. Uh, let me see if I can pick up a little thing right over here. What do you got, Fly Squatter? I'm, I'm in like, what do you call it? Novice, so I'm gonna be ahead of everyone. There's no point in like trying to even use it. Look at this. Boost, let's pick up, uh, okay, let's see. Let's pick up a little bit more boost. Let's go here, bowling ball. Can I climb up these walls? I can, that's pretty cool. Boost, more boost. Oh, I'm faster than the bowling ball. But yeah, you get the idea. Let me just quit out of this. So games work perfectly fine. Browsing, desktop usage. I even installed some emulation. So check this out. I got PPSSP or PSP and I've actually got a game, which is Dirt 2, in here. I'm gonna skip through the intro part and just jump into the game because it does take a while to load this bit, but you'll see what I mean. So here we go. We are loading right into a game and I just sped through the beginning and you can see how smooth it is. It runs PSP just fine. Here we go. I'm not that great in this game with a keyboard. Actually, I'm not that great in this game even without a keyboard, but you could see how well it works. It actually runs really well with PSP. And this is a pretty heavy, intensive graphic game. You can see all the trees moving, uh, the ground, the car. It's got some shadows going on that I can't drive. Uh, but ultimately, this game is a pretty good testing point on running PSP. And um, it, it has no problems running this type of game. So emulation does work really well. And I believe you could probably get a uh, PlayStation 2 uh, working on this. So this would be a pretty strong uh, emulation work course. Especially um, if you're gonna run some emulation to Android, um, that you should have no problems with that either. Especially if Android should run better on this platform because it's more geared towards that with the way they're building the raw chips. So yeah. Um, as you can see, it runs really well. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. That was a funny last crash. And I'm gonna show you an error message that I usually get on certain games because it's try it's having a hard time creating a window in Wayland. So uh, I downloaded uh, Astro Menace and built it on my own. And as you can see, as soon as I try it, it will say fail to create GL. Uh, EGL window surface, and this applies to Wayland. I'm not too sure what it is right now with this, and I haven't diagnosed it yet, but it, I know the graphic acceleration does work because the games that we're testing does work perfectly fine. Now, as we're here, 
I'm also going to show you the NPU. And they did have some testing uh, libraries that I was able to play around with. So first we have something called face mask, which is pre-programmed to actually see people on their face mask. So I'm going to head over to that folder and I can show you what the original image is. So if I head over to face mask data and they have the image, the first image they have is a picture of a girl with the face mask and that's all it is. Now, if I was to run the program, Python three face mask.py, it's going to look at that photo and built out an output. And in that output, it's going to have the face mask with the girl. It actually tells you like, okay, that's the girl with the face mask. So I actually went online and downloaded a second picture, which is this one. And it has three people with face masks. And I'm just going to see if it's going to work, which you could find that on, I think New York. I don't know. I, I found it online somewhere. So I'm going to have to rename this to phase two and then rename phase one. Oops. Rename phase one to face. This way the program could pick it up. I'm going to remove the out dot JPEG. So it's no, not, no longer there and run the face mask program one more time. So now it should have spit out an output, which is the out two. I'm going to go back here, run that image. And there we have it. It finds all three masks with 87% certainty that well, this one is the clearest of them all, but it's 83, 83, and then 87. I'm guessing because this is closer. But yeah, this finds the face mask and it tells me which person has it. Now, if you pre-program this particular code for, I don't know, say bees or something, and you have some models of bees and then you programmed it and you pointed a camera somewhere, it could count bees for you. So that's what the MPU is made for. It's for AI. It's able to do this face detection or stuff like that. As far as the conclusion goes, I really enjoyed using this. It really did feel like a desktop. It's very responsive. It's able to go through all the stuff that I would normally use as a regular desktop. Uh, the 16 gigabyte version would do slightly better as far as application wise, because you just got more RAM, but ultimately I didn't find the need for it with the eight gigs of RAM version. Now, not having the 40 pin GPIO does hinder it just a little bit because I do enjoy using the GPIOs at times. Otherwise, it is a fantastic board. It's very fast. You could use it for almost anything. If they got Debian installed on here, you could probably turn it into a Proxmox server. Um, this would be amazing for a Docker server or the Pi hosted series because it's so fast. I get a lot of stuff working on here. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, uh, hit me up down in the comments below or on my Discord. I will be doing an Android version of this board because I feel that I'm going to get a lot more performance because it's got the better, more refined kernel. So I will be doing that just to run some benchmarks to see where it's at. Otherwise, that is it. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.